we are going to connect this real board and we are going to measure the uh, noise on VCC pin. Theoretically, there should be no really difference in the noise uh, when you are switching uh, outputs at 10 kHz or 50 kHz or 100 kHz, theoretically. But you will see in the real measurement there is something really interesting happening. But uh, I'm going to leave everything to Florian. He is going to explain in the next clip what is in the screenshot what he took during this measurement. And once this clip is finished, we will go back to some of the parts in the video and I will explain them a little bit more. So now first watch this video and then I will explain a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So here you can see frequency 100 hertz. The outputs are switching on and off. So the, the blue uh, curve, that's the, the pin voltage. The output pin voltage, you can see it's high, low, high, low. Uh, so two volts per division. So it's two, four, five volts, so zero, five, zero, five, zero, five. And you can see that the uh, voltage, the VCC voltage follows inversely. So when the outputs are switched on, there is some current flowing, which causes some voltage drop. Um, then at higher frequencies, at uh, 1.2 kilohertz, you can see the same effect, but there is already some ringing that appears directly after the switching. So these uh, beginning spikes in the beginning, I have drawn them here, you can see that as, so, as soon as the switching happens, there is some resonance that is triggered, and this resonance you see is damped, but it's damped very low, so it, there is quite some oscillation that goes on before mm -hmm. it disappears again. A good damping will just cause one overshoot and Mm -hmm. and uh, disappearing. If you have a high Q, then you will see these ringings like you do here, and it's 66 kilohertz. So you can see that each so switching... You, even at this uh, 100 or 1 kilohertz, you can measure that you will have problems at 66 kilohertz. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the, the edge, uh, of course, yeah. is a step, but the step contains all the frequencies nearly. It triggers the resonance and the resonance rings. Wow, the, the I didn't peak, know that. The big to peak result in that case, the amplitude shows 27, but that's just the main, main, uh, the low frequency. The higher frequencies will be, as you see, is 20 millivolts per division, so it will be 20, 40, it will be already 80 millivolts, but just for the short, for the high frequencies. Okay. okay, and then as soon, of course, as we go into a higher frequency, then we can make it happen to trigger the oscillation more often, because it's not disappeared when it's triggered again. The damping mm -hmm. could not, it did not have time to 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 damp it disappear. out, and it's triggered, ah, okay. yeah, to disappear, and it's triggered again and again and again and again. The and then, is high. Mm -hmm. then the the noise is getting even higher. So here it's already 100 millivolts of, uh, of peak to peak. And if we make it more higher, the frequency, and eventually make it even higher, even higher, eventually we can just find the resonance frequency of the resonant tank and just trigger a nice oscillation every time. Every time switching on, off, on, off, there is pushed energy into the oscillation at the right moment. It's not the perfect one, you can see here, it could be probably even better here at 66 kilohertz, 66, that's ne nearly a sine wave already, and that's already a uh, very high voltage, you can see, 200 wow. millivolts. Of, uh, Why of they don't teach us this at school, tell me. Hmm? Why they don't teach us this at school? Because it's too much at once, I think. And very nice ah, but picture. I think this, this explains everything. It explains a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. I think you can make a nice course of that. <laughs> and this picture is also beautiful because it shows that the output voltage of the pin is, of course, following the, the VCC. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So here I have set the zero point to the same. 
it's one volt per division in both cases, and you can already see that every time mm -hmm. the oscillation is triggered, the output voltage drops when it's switched on, and then wow. the other way around. That's very nice. Wow. So there is something really special going on at this 66 kilohertz frequency. When your processor, when your microcontroller, when your FPGA is running uh, something at this special frequency, it will generate much higher noise. So it's quite important to actually know about these critical frequencies, where exactly they are on your board. What are the frequencies when your board uh, when your VCC pins will be experiencing these very high noises. And that's exactly how this PDN uh, impedance can help you. And now I'm quite sure you are getting uh, the idea of what we are going to talk about. The first critical frequency is the peak which is here. In this simulation, we are not getting exactly the 60 kilohertz or 66 kilohertz. You can see in this simulation, it looks like the critical frequency would be like this is 10, 20, around 30 kilohertz. But on the real board, the critical frequency is 66 kilohertz. Hmm. But now the question is, it's quite different. So is this simulation really going to help me? Uh, simulation is not considering some other factors. For example, don't forget this board is connected through USB cable. Then you don't know exactly what are the parameters of the power supply inside of the PC, which is powering your board. This is again not included in this simulation. However, you can actually measure this PDN impedance of your real board, of your real system. And when you measure it, this is how it looks. This is the green line is the measured real board, impedance of the real board. And you can see that this is 10 kilohertz, 20, 30, 40, 50, at 60 uh, kilohertz, there is this kind of peak. And this is telling us there will be problem with the noise. This peak which is here, that's exactly what we can see here in these measurements. Uh, a little bit later, we will speak about how you can do the real measurements of your board. Uh, and uh, before we do that, I would like to go and explain uh, some other screenshots which are here in this, uh, in this file because also some of the other things what Florian said are very, very interesting. Florian was talking about this graph. And uh, in this graph, we can actually see how high was the noise for different frequencies. So you can see for the 66 kilohertz, the noise was really, really high. For lower frequencies, the noise was really, really low. Now, have a look at this graph, which is down here. This is the PDN impedance measured on the VCC pin. Can you see the similarities? This is very similar to what we can see here. It is flat, then there is this small hill, and there is this big peak, and it goes down. It is flat, there is small hill, then there is, there is this big peak, and it goes down. So once you know this PDN uh, impedance graph, then it will help you to understand how much noise you can get on specific pin for specific frequencies. Okay? Very, very useful. How is it possible? 
how is it possible that this graph knows what kind of noise we are going to see on our VCC pin?